Good morning. Welcome to the footy show. And thanks again for a great netball show by Bertie Burton. And I couldn't believe it. I reckon I'll be rolling my grave. I'd have been dead to see a Philpot is actually playing netball for the Tommy Tigers. Melanie Philpot in the A grade. Good on you, Melanie. We might be related, but then again, you're probably saying absolutely no way. Anyway, back to the footy. A magnificent round of footy last weekend. Winchelsea, too good for Corio. Sprung a leak, three goals for the Winchelsea Blues. Anike, too good for Geelong West. With Daryl Pittman from the footy show. I don't know how he does it. He kicked six goals and straight back to the footy show. The Tommy Tides absolutely destroyed the Belmont Lions and kept their hopes alive for playing in finals footy this year. Adrian Salter Macchia kicking 12 goals. A magnificent effort there. Bannockburn, too good for Inverlee. Just three points only, and apparently Inverlee are a bit stiff. East Geelong destroyed the poor old North Geelong Magpies, particularly in the last quarter. Sean O'Leary kicking seven goals. Magnificent first half by Kevin O'Leary's magnificent son. And, of course, Paul Briggett from the North Geelong Footy Club. He booted nine in a losing side, a great effort, taking his tally to 90 goals. So it looks like he may get the big 100 before the end of the season. And the 94.7 match of the round. The Bell Post Hill Panthers, too good for the Werribee Central's footy club. Hello, I'm Dick Philpott, and welcome again to a great show. And I've got with me doing the talking once again some of the biggest names and brains in local football. And we've got a very special guest on the show this morning. I'm just wait till you see who it is. But first of all, the legend of the Bannockburn Tigers, Dale Smith. G'day, Dale. Yeah, good morning, Dick. Nice to be back here. Uh, I'm not too sure what's going to happen this afternoon with this weather, but uh, looking forward to another good contest when we travel up the, the uh, duck pond. It might be Adelaide. Adequately oh, named this afternoon yeah, because uh, could get a bit damp, but never mind. We'll wait and see what happens. Grubby gets a bit uh, snooty when we call the duck pond, so we better be careful. Duck pond, duck pond, duck pond, duck pond, duck pond, duck pond. We've got him in control, mate. He's actually going to join us in the commentary oh. today, so uh, should be looking forward to that. Sensational call indeed. And of course, I did mention we've got a very special guest. He is a 29 game veteran of the Belmont Lions. He kicked 50 goals. He played his last game only about two weeks ago. He turned 50 on the weekend. I peak speak fitness. Of, mate, peak oh, fitness. Peak of fitness. I mean, between Cogsy and I, well, I've just given away who it is. The magnificent man from the. Have a look at this, folks. Take a look at this. Straight from wardrobe and makeup. The great man himself, Brian Coglin of the Belmont Lions Footy Club. G'day, Cogsy. Good morning, Dick. Great to be here. And uh, yeah, looking forward to a great day down at the Belmont Lions. As I'm heading off there soon, as hopefully see you. One of the records in under 18 football, young Zach Jarn heading towards his 100th goal. Only needs six, so should be good. Crock, you only said good morning to him. He's taken over the whole bloody show. What are we going to do about that? Well, we had some fantastic interviews. We'll talk to Cogs a bit later on. Great interviews from the footy last week, of course, and it was the Werribee Central's Bell Post Hill game. David Leach, the coach of the Werribee Centurions, and Brett Gurgich from the Belmont... We'll start at game. Got me a Belmont crazy now. The Bell Post Hill Panthers. Here they go. Uh, David, missing a few players, but probably not a, not a real excuse in the end. Yeah, no, no, no excuse there, mate. Jeez, um, you can't use the excuse you're missing any players, mate, because um, come finals time, you could be missing the same sort of blokes or you could be missing other blokes. So that's no excuse, mate. They, um, they out outplayed us in the first um, half, like you wouldn't believe. Um, they just won the 50-50 contested ball. Um, we seem to get our hands on the ball and then come to a second stoppage, and then they'd clear it from that second stoppage. And, um, they, and that made them look a lot quicker than us and, um, and then started making us look unaccountable as well, mate. So we're outplayed, mate. Are you confident that you'll be able to turn it around come finals time? There's obviously a lot of stuff you, you need to work on. They're an extremely good side, probably the, the best at the moment. How could you turn it around and what do you say to your players when you uh, come up against them again in the finals? Yeah, I'm, like I'm, I'm, I'm confident you can, we can turn it around, but at the same time we need to be able to um, obviously deliver on all the, our game plan and our basics all the time. And um, We only delivered on those for a small part of today. And um, Do I think we can turn it around? Yeah, definitely think we can. And um, Obviously we'll go back and we'll um, work on the things that we need to and um, and yeah maybe get one or two players back and um, we'll go from there but um, that's not the end of the world we're still we're still in a good position and um, we'll still go into finals and um, and it's still positive but I hate losing mate and um, I hate losing the players hate losing and they're hurting in there at the moment and um, and that's two years in a row that we've been touched up up here uh, big game next week against East Geelong at home. Uh, how are you going to approach that with your uh, team? You got a few to come in, or uh, are you going to have a few that might miss again? 
Yeah, we'll, we'll still have a couple that miss. Um, we've got uh, there, there's five at the moment, and um, and and whether they come back, they do, mate. But um, we still put 22 blokes out on the field each week to do the job, and um, we didn't have 22 contributors, and um, we probably didn't have 10 or 12, <laughs> and um, and and that's the case, and so and that's why you lose by seven or eight goals, and um, so yeah, we need to turn around next week. Um, East Geelong are a good side. Um, me and Scrub obviously got a, obviously um, a bit of rivalry because we're mates and so forth. So they'll come out and they'll be in red hot form. Um, they would have had a good win today, and um, we'll go into um, next week and um, we'll start again on Tuesday. We need to go in there, have a beer with these boys, and then um, get down to training on Tuesday night and do things a little bit better than we have. All right, thanks, David. No worries. Cheers. And Kel Lauther now with the winning Panthers coach, Brent Goody. Brent, good win today. What aspects of how your side played were you happy with today? Uh, I think, again, our pressure and tackling and chasing and all that sort of stuff was good again, and um, that gets his first use of the ball, I suppose. So, again, it was as good as it's sort of been the last couple of weeks, so pretty happy with that. Uh, talk about your defence just briefly. You must have been really happy with overall's performance on uh, Kitchen. Yeah, I'd rate Stevie as good as um, any backman pretty much in the comp, and I've, I don't say that to many people. I'm told that to him, and um, obviously Kitchen's probably the dominant forward in the in the in the comp. And looking at their entries just then, it looks like they didn't have a lot of entries, so it probably didn't help him. But um, yeah, when Stevie had the chance one on one, I think he beat him most times today. So we can you talk about Jaden Symes just for a minute. He was uh, fantastic again. He's really. Uh, becoming a very, very good player for you. Yeah, I, I think he's been good all year. I think the first three or four games, he was probably our best player. So he's possibly leading our best and fairest, I think. And we're just very lucky because we don't we don't have another Ruckman really at the moment. We've got Timmy who can who can chop him out, but he's more of a, probably a centre-half forward. So we're lucky to have him. He's only 17 and he's, he's um, going to be a good player in the future, definitely. Yeah, tell us a little bit about Chris Mullen too, just his injury, finally. Yeah, I think he um, he rolled his ankle a little bit. I th he probably could have played, but it was, um, as we sort of kept our um, lead, I think we just kept him off longer and longer. But I think, um, yeah, if it was a bit closer, we would have brought him on. Fantastic. And a great interview there by Kel Louth. And, of course, Kel will be back again next week with some great interviews because those two guys that he interviewed will be definitely figuring in the finals action in 2010. Don't you worry about that. Now, we said we had a fantastic guest on this morning. He's a local legend around footy, but, uh, of course, everyone knows him as Cogsy from the Belmont Lions. Now, Cogsy, uh, we, only, we said at the start of the show, 29-game veteran, and up until about three or four weeks ago, you were a 28-game veteran. Tell us what made a 49-year-old man actually put the boots on and have a run with the Belmont Lions a couple of weeks ago. Well, uh, Dick, it was more of a case of uh, we were very short of players and <clears throat> they said to me, well, what do you reckon? And I thought, well, why not? I'll just uh, sit on the bench. That's all I intended to do. But you weren't on the bench for long, is that right? No, I there. wasn't. There was, a, in fact, a white-tailed spider and um, that was the end of me. <laughs> so it was straight back into the rooms and, um, yeah, so... The last time I had a, a confrontation with a white-tailed spider, I spent three days in hospital, so... Well, no, to, to me, that so just, that was, that's once bitten, twice ice cogs, isn't it? That's correct, Al. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, confidential, they reckon the look on the white-tailed tail spider's face was enough anyway. Well, he got the shock of his life as well, and he scooted. <laughs> he probably did. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Now, what about Popey? Did he get on the bench with you too? No, well, actually, John, Johnny Pope, no, he uh, stayed in the car. Oh, that was convenient. He was ready to go, but no, we kept him in the car, <laughs> under wrap. Under wrap. Now, you turned 50 on Sunday. It was a big day out there. A lot of local uh, football personalities out there from the Judy of Allen and from other clubs. And uh, you obviously enjoyed yourself. Yeah, Dick, it was a terrific day. I'm, you know, it was much appreciated for everyone to turn up and well, had a great time. And yeah, I didn't think I'd ever get to 50, but I made it. So, yeah, it was terrific. Oh, I know, mate. Actually, when you're 55, they can say you say you're 50 plus GST. <laughs> That'll be good then, too. Don't you worry about that. Yeah. Fantastic, Cogs. We're going to get your opinion later on with some of the big games on this afternoon, including some comments about the under-18s with Dale Simmett, because I know the Belmont Lions are going very well on the under-18s. But first of all, we're going to pay some bills, we're going to take a break, and we'll come back, and it will be Dale's under-18 second. Back after this. <laughs> 